purpose of this video is to briefly explain the process of setting up PAX terminals to work with Qfloors. So right off the bat, the first thing you need to understand is to be able to connect a PAX terminal to Qfloors requires some network understanding of how to set up devices on a network. Um, it's easier if the machines are only on your local network and you're not having to access them from outside of the company. That's fairly simple. If you have a basic understanding of networking, you'll probably be able to do that. The gist is you have to set up a static local IP address on your router that can only be accessed by the PAX machine. So if you know how to do that, you can probably go ahead and do that. Um, if you're coming from outside of your local network, for example, like QCloud, that is much more involved, much more complex because there's a lot of security things that have to be done if you're coming from outside of your network trying to go through a firewall, that kind of stuff. It will require somebody that's pretty versed in in networking and, and how to you know get through firewalls and that kind of thing. You um, should know that at that point you're going to need to get a static uh, public IP address probably and and then you're going to have to have a good understanding of how to do port forwarding and some things like that to to get everything to hook up so uh, just kind of uh, that's what you're looking at when you're trying to do this the reason why you would probably want to go to all that trouble is because there's some great features that you'll be able to take advantage of the, the biggest one is tokenization, which will allow you to get a lot lower rates on your processing if you're, if you're using that. And the only way to do that is if you have your Q floors connected to, uh, to a terminal. So just so you know, that's kind of what you're looking at there. The first step in all this is you're going to set up your PAX machine with all the settings that need to be put in there, the IP addresses, the subnet mask. Uh, the ports. There's a very detailed uh, document that we have that you should that you should have in your possession. It talks about setting setting up your packs, and it will walk you through the details of that. Again, it's intended for somebody that understands IT uh, technical stuff. And so, if that's not you, you're you're going to want to get somebody to help you with that. So step one, get get all the settings inside of the packs. Okay. Step two. You're going to go to your QFloor software, and this is where we're going to now connect up to the packs, right? So you're going to go up to settings, and you're going to go down to credit card processor. And if you've been doing credit card processing in the past, you may have seen this window before. We're going to set up a new machine, a new PAX. So all we do there is you're going to scroll down to where there's one, a new, you have a new account. You're going to change the name here, so we're going to do this PAX uh, 200 new. Okay, push OK. And then you'll notice um, if it says non secure here, there's all these fields. When I change this to secure TCPIP, which is what you're going to use with the PAX, all of these fields down here disappear. Those are only used for the older technologies that we've had. And so the newer ones don't require that. All they require is an IP address. Before I put the IP address in though, we're going to talk about locations. You'll see that there's basically two settings here. Multiple device, one location. That means if you have more than one PAX terminal in the same physical location, this is the setting that you're going to want. If you only have one PAX machine for this, this physical location, you can just select the location name. That's what beachfront uh, floors and Redwood, that, that refers to a physical location. And the reason that we do this is because every time you go to run a credit card with, uh, with a, a sales order, it will know what the default PAX machine it, it should select to, to do the processing. So that's what this location stuff's all about. Again, if you have more than one device in the same location, select multiple device, one location, okay? Then you're going to come down and you're going to put the IP address in here. I already have one saved. 
this would be the IP address that you put into your PAX machine if you're on a local LAN, right? Uh, it would be the same exact one and it would have the same exact port number as you put into your PAX machine. This 10009 at the end is the port number. If you are coming from outside of your network, like in QCloud, it will be a completely different address. It will not be the same. This will be the address of your, your static public IP address of your router and then your router will forward that to a different the the address on your packs probably so just to make that clear again if you're outside of the network this will not be the same as the packs if you're inside of your network it will be the same as your packs okay now once you have this set up you're just gonna simply hit the save button and hit uh, test SSL right here that means secure and if you did it correctly it'll come back and say connection successful if you do not do it correctly like for example let me put in a four let me put in a three eight here instead of four eight okay hit save and now if I hit test you'll see that it starts taking a lot lot longer because it's out there searching 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 and it's not gonna find it and you'll see the error message come up here really quick while we're waiting for the error message I should also mention that the IP address when you put it into the packs um, there we go can't find the packs right so that's the error message you'll get if I put my 4 back in here now connected successfully okay so I should um, also just mention that inside of the packs machine when you put the IP address in instead of just uh, dot one dot you know I don't there's no zeros there it requires zero zero one it requires three digits for every number in Q floors you cannot put the two leading zeros in front of there so that's just one little difference just just to make you aware of that in here there's no leading zeros in the PAX machine it requires leading zeros okay alright so once we get this set up like this and I've got my PAX 200 new right here now we can go make a payment on on an invoice on a sales order so if I come over here hit my payments button I've got a balance of 3800 still here I hit my credit card and now I'm going to put an amount in here let's just put one dollar should be okay select your employee now I'm gonna hit the Heartland uh, button here it will bring up this processing window you'll see right here that I have both my PAX 200 and my PAX 200 new right and this is where the location that we put in the setup window matters um, because whatever is over there will automatically select the right machine here you can see you could have five or six in here right and you want it by default to select the right machine so that's where that kinda comes into play and then if you have the credit card on hand all you're gonna do is hit the process button and it's gonna ask me for the card if you don't have the card on hand you can um, hit this key in number here and I don't know what my password is that's kind of a problem isn't it I think I don't know let me guess hey I guessed right key floors key floors is always a good bet and so once you do that you can see that it opens up and lets you uh, give you the ability to type in all this information you'll need to type it all in that uh, billing house number this is a number only don't put a, uh, the names of any addresses just the number but if you're gonna type in you need to fill everything in here completely okay if not you know you can uh, just take that out and then uh, hit the process card to go ahead and process a credit card two other things I'm gonna briefly mention get token this has to do with tokenization we have a full video that explains about you know how to how to set up the tokenization how to get it all that kind of thing let's just say if if you have a balance outstanding after you pay the one dollar which we will um, and you have this selected down here it will automatically try to get a token every time if you don't have this checked it will not try to get a token for you okay it'll just run normally um, if you have it checked it will run normally but it will also grab a token and save a token for future use uh, I refer you to the other video 
to help you uh, understand tokenization more. Um, so I'm just going to run, I'll, I'll do a token, I'll get a token, and we're just going to go ahead and process this, and I'm going to be putting in an actual chip card. Now I'm on my terminal here, and it says insert or swipe your card. You can say, see right behind here it says see credit card terminal like that. So now I'm putting my EMV card in, my chip. By the way, this is the portable portable packs. They're pretty cool. Kind of heard probably that beep, beep, beep. That means transaction approved on the screen. Take my card out and I can now come over here and I can look at um, the the details of what it actually ran. It was a dollar, it was a visa, the last four digits of the card. So you can print this out and have your customer sign in if you would like to do that. Okay. Um, then at that point we're right here. Now if you need to return a card, okay, um, and all you're going to do is hit your credit card return here, and this is what's important. If you're returning it on the same day and you have not batched out yet, you can actually um, void that transaction and it'll never show up on their statement or your statement or anything. Okay. If you've already batched out and it's the next day, you're going to have to um, run another transaction and again it'll show that you on their statement that you ran it one day and then you backed it out the next. So there's two ways of doing this, right? So I'm going to run it like um, we did it on the same day. You'll need to know this transaction number. See where it says 50 right here down in the bottom? PAX, Visa, Trans, 50. You'll need to know that number because that's the number that you'll need to void it with. And then I'm going to put a negative $1 in here like this. Uh, the negative will make it so that you don't have any uh, warning or error messages. I hit my Heartland button again here. And then all I have to do, if you uh, you can see, I'll, I'll do the use token since I got a token, but all you're going to have to do is hit the process here. Oh, actually it won't even use it because we're doing it on the same day. So um, we won't even need that. So I hit process, I come up, and it says void charge on today's batch. Yes, I have not batched out yet, so I know that it's that. And then it tells me you're going to need to know the transaction number. So I say yes here, and now I put my transaction number of 50. I don't need the credit card, I don't need the token, I don't need anything, I just put 50 in here. I look and it says processing on my terminal here. And then you'll probably hear the little beep there, transaction approved. And then if I come over here, you'll see that it says voided cell right here, and you'll see a negative one down here. And then you'll come back over here and you'll see voided transaction, right? right here. Okay. Negative one, one. Okay. So that's how you do it. If you're um, doing a return from the same day, if you're doing it from another day, very similar. Um, I can just do, let's say I did a, 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 a dollar 50 on another day. Um, and then I hit Heartland like this. Okay. And now I'm going to have to either have the credit card at this point or a token. Um, to return to return that. So it, let's just say I, I need my credit card again. I'm going to hit process like this. Oh, I, I have to hit credit card return. That's the problem. If you hit credit card and you're trying to do a negative and a return, it's not going to do it, right? So it recognizes that. So I'm going to hit um, this now and you can see it comes up with uh, today's batch again. And I'm going to hit no, or no this time because it's not on today. You have chosen to create a new transaction for a negative amount. Continue with this return. This is a new return transaction, yes. And now it's going to ask me to swipe again because it's not on the same day, right? So you're going to either need to have the card or your the number, type in the number or a token. Okay. Okay, transaction approved. I take the card out and you can see now it says return. One is a return and one is a void. They're, they are completely different things there. Okay, And that's how you do it. And that's how you process credit cards.
So now you have your packs all set up and you have your Qfloor software connected to it so everything's working. At this point you're going to want to fill out the settings paper that we set, uh, sent to you in the email. Fill that out with all the settings for the PAX machine. Send it in to the email address on, on that paper and then they should respond back to you telling you when they've recorded all of those settings for you. When they've done that, the very last thing you're going to want to do is unplug your PAX machine, plug it back in, and make sure that it loads correctly after they've told you that they've uh, changed or updated all of your settings. This means that the PAX machine will do one final test to make sure that you can load the settings from Heartland and that's in case you know you have ever have a failure or something like that on your terminals they have all the settings that that you're gonna need and your downtime will be very minimal if you will do that um, and I guess I should say one last last thing right and that is once you have all this working if you are accessing the terminals from outside your local network like with QCloud uh, be sure and set your firewall to only allow trusted IP addresses, trusted uh, sources from the outside to be accessing your PAX machine. If you're an IT guy, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about there, and uh, and that will make you a little bit more secure. And uh, then once you do that, again, try everything again, make sure it works. That's the that's the ticket. That's what you need to do. Thanks.